life It was my turn Till I met you Sing and you call You call my name In time ran out of that grave
surrender, Lord. As we uh, prepare ourselves for today, God, I hope that you would encourage us and strengthen us to make room for you, Jesus, for all that you have for us today in worship and in the message and all things when we go home, Lord, that we would continue to make room for you, that we may hear, that we may see, that we may know you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. We've got some announcements for you guys to so go ahead and check these out. Hi, 
I'm Charlotte Kelly, and I just want to welcome you to Kensington. And I'll tell you what, as much as I love summer, I can't help but start to feel excited about the fall season. And one thing I think I get really excited about about fall is starting to think about Thanksgiving and really about the true meaning of the holidays. I know for me and my family, one of the ways that we found meaning and true gratitude is to spend a day in November delivering baskets to families in need from our school partners. It's really cool when we meet people right where they're at, we share a simple gesture of generosity, and to me, it's just one way that we get to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a practical way. And if you can believe it, this is Kensington's 28th year of doing this for our neighbors. And over the recent past, we've replaced a giant turkey and all the fixings with a gift card because we know that families want to make their own special recipes when they're celebrating together. So for every $50 donation, one family will receive a Thanksgiving bag packed with paper goods and lots of love and a gift card. So let's make this Thanksgiving a special one by generously loving our neighbors. So you can donate anytime and be sure to sign up to volunteer to deliver on November 19th by just going to kensingtonchurch.org backslash Thanksgiving. And if you're in need this year and you call Kensington your church home, please give our office a call. I have another invitation for you. We're going to be celebrating baptisms during the services coming up on Sunday, November 20th. So let me ask you, is it your time to take the plunge? Has God been nudging you? See, we believe that one of the defining moments in the life of a believer is baptism. And so much leads up to it. God does a work in your heart, and then you respond with courage to show publicly all that he's done in you privately. So if you're ready, we want to celebrate with you. You can take the next step by finding more information or signing up for baptism at kensingtonchurch.org backslash baptism. And now we're going to dive into week three in our growing series. I hope you've been finding the past few weeks encouraging and challenging as we've been digging into the important topic of growing our faith. Don't forget, you can go to kensingtonchurch.org backslash growing to find this growth process graphic and our weekly discussion guides. Thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good, man. Excited. I've got Sarah Rands up here with me, uh, who was just singing and leading us in worship. Wasn't she phenomenal, by the way? And a wonderful heart. And uh, what's pretty amazing and talented about you is that you're also the student ministry director at our Troy campus. So, And you're going to be helping along with Jared Lee, our student ministry director here, uh, the Wild Retreat. So I just wanted you to share just a few thoughts about what's happening at Wild. Is the registration still open? Do you need more volunteers? Like, you just <laughs> let us have it. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, the answer is yes to everything. Um, for those of you who have not heard of what Wild Retreat is, Wild is the biggest event that we do with our students all year. So this is for all of our students, grades 6 through 12, and with all of our campuses. And so we're going to have hundreds of students coming to hang out with us up at Spring Hill Camp this next weekend. We have some amazing worship and some people coming to lead us in messages throughout the weekend, as well as a ton of activities for our students to really intentionally grow cl closer together as a community, but also closer in their faith and closer in their um, walk with Jesus. And so this is not something that you're going to want to miss. As he said, yeah. registration is open all week, but don't wait because it is so worth it. This year, our theme is actually hidden in plain sight as we wrestle with how we can be bold and be unashamed in our faith. And so um, awesome. if you guys are wanting to get your student registered, you can do that right now. Actually, with this link that we have up here, again, don't wait. It's so worth it. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah, Thank so you. much. Cool. Give her a hand, man. Uh, I, uh, it's incredible to watch us. I was just texting with Jared uh, earlier and said, how many students are prepped and signed up? And people still, there's already 55 students from our campus alone that are signed up. Isn't that incredible? Uh, that are going to be part of that. It's an incredible weekend. Our students are reminded how loved they are, cared about, make great decisions to follow Jesus and, and, and to be able to, like Sarah said, man, live out a life where they don't have to be ashamed of their faith, that they can, they can own their faith and walk in their faith. And it's a really huge thing, amazing thing. So if you've got grandkids, kids, man, get them signed up. So, hey, the next thing we've got, Truck or Treat coming up October 30th. Uh, do me a favor, we've got like 10 more of these signs. How many of you would be willing to grab a sign and uh, put it in your yard or put it somewhere like, would you do that? You're good? Can I throw this to you? I'm afraid because I've done this before and I've hit people. One time I took a king size candy bar and tossed it to the back and it hit a kid in the head. And so since then, I just don't do that. But I, there's more out by the hub, but I, maybe I will. Would you, you want to take that? Yeah, you're good? Okay, you ready? If you get hit in the face, it's not on me. I'm just kidding. I don't want to do that. You gotta, oh, there we go. Give her a hand. I love it. Trunk or treat. So 
And uh, we're still in need some more cars. The, the next favor I, I want to ask is going to be incredible on the 30th. We've got bounce houses. We've got food trucks. And the biggest fun part, man, is people from our community come in, kids, friends, neighbors, and they get a walk through and do this whole trunk or treat experience. Uh, we just need a few more cars. Would you be willing to, to do that? Decorate your car, go all out, bring tons of candy and stuff like that. Well, come on, I need to see hands when I'm seeing this. I need 33 cars, actually. So I got like one, two, three. I get more cars? Come on, you're thinking about it. Sir, you're, th- you're smiling. I'm smiling at you. Can you do your car? Can you do it? I'm just kidding, making this to an auction. But anyhow, at the Hub, if you would, thank you so much. So many of you put your hands up. At the Hub, go back to the Hub when you're done here, and you can sign up that way, okay? Uh, you can do that, and it's a blast. You're going to love that day. It'll be right after service. We always have an incredible time. Community comes, and it's, just, it's a blast. And it's a great opportunity to be able to really connect with people and have a conversation. Uh, sometimes in, the, in and out, when you're coming here on Sundays, you don't get a chance to do that. You will on the 30th. So uh, we're just super, super excited about that. So, And we've also got a date night coming up on November 7th, and we'd love to bring you out to this. It's going to be a bingo. How many of you are competitive a little bit? Uh, I don't know if competition and date night is a good idea, uh, but we're going to merge it and see what happens anyhow, right? Uh, how that goes. My wife is pretty competitive, so I, I like during this has been a while ago during the pandemic, uh, we were playing this game. What was that ride? Ride the train? What was it? What's that? Ticket to ride. And we were together with couples like zooming in and stuff. And Maria said, Why don't you open up your own account? And then we don't have to be in the same team because she wanted to beat me. She was like, I'm like, that's missing the point, you know? So, but it's going to be a blast. So we'd love for you to sign up and be part of that. Uh, and this is just not for married couple. couple. If you're dating, if you're engaged, if you're just whatever, you know, we, we'd love for it to come. Any couples at all, okay, uh, to come and be part of that night. It'd be a blast. And so, hey, one cool thing, too, and we're still looking, looking for some more. Uh, with our special needs community around here, we just love and cherish uh, so much. We've had people volunteering. And if you, we just want to continue to share that and elevate that privilege that we get to be part of. Uh, if you have any interest or heartbeat at all, uh, we, we provide training and you could help back in our K-Kids area. Um, it'd be a special companion to one of our special needs uh, children that are back there. And uh, it, it's just one of the greatest privileges ever. Uh, I can be part of that. So we just want to invite you to do that. So, well, before we get moving too far, uh, we're going to get ready to take our offering. Uh, and so I, I, I let our ushers come forward and go ahead and do that. Uh, many of you give online, probably like almost 80, 85, 90% of us uh, do that online. You can do that. There's multiple ways you can register and do that online. And uh, I want to thank you for that generosity. One cool thing today, too, that we, you get to be part of a movement. Multiple campuses, multiple church plants. Uh, in fact, today you're going to be blessed. And this speaker, she's unbelievable, uh, part of Santos Church in southwest Detroit. Uh, Carmen uh, Cologne is here. And uh, give her a hand. She's down here. We're going to see her. She is a vibrant, passionate speaker. Her and her husband, Rich, are the pastors there, and they're part of a church planning uh, network that we get the privilege to become alongside you and be part of, and so she's gonna blast your socks off today, man. It's gonna be awesome. And so, hey, while they're taking off, I wanted to tell you, uh, your generosity is not just for programs. It impacts people in a huge way. And I wanna share you one thing. All, we do many things around here. Student ministry trips, right? Retreats, trunk or treats, kids program, marriage nights, you know, celebrate recovery. I mean, it's a privilege what we all get to be part of, right? And I want to tell you, there's an email that came in. We do short-term mission trips all the time. And one of our global partners is in Kenya. And uh, this was a really beautiful thing. This just happened like about a week ago. And uh, Mark Pascal, he's a doctor. We do short-term medical mission trips too. If you're a nurse or a doctor or in the medical field, we do medical short-term trips too. They sent this email in. Uh, It said Mark's medical team traveled over 13 hours from the capital of Nairobi to rotate through six different medical clinic sites where they attended to more than, listen to this, 3,000 people. We we get to be part of, that's an extension of what we get to do. Is that incredible or what? 3,000 people. Uh, And it it was going on and on, but one really special, amazing thing is there was a young lady. uh, She was full-term pregnant, and and she was getting ready to to deliver, and there was nobody that was going to be there. The place she went was closed. Uh, Mark's team heard about it, rushed over there. They happened to have a pediatric specialist on there. Uh, all the right equipment that they needed, and they were able to deliver a, a beautiful baby little boy, too. Isn't that incredible? So, I mean, I just think, like, are you kidding? We, we get to be part of beautiful things here and over there and all across the world. And so uh, I, I just want to encourage you, like, it's cool to watch God move. It's cool to be part of what God's doing. And uh, I, I just want to keep encouraging you, keep taking steps of faith. Wherever you're at with the Lord, wherever you're at with God, beginning of a faith journey, you have maybe not started one yet, or you're right in the middle of it, or you've been doing it for a long time, keep just taking steps of faith uh, and trusting God and watch what he does in your life. So well, do me a favor, will you stand up and just say hi to somebody and shake their hand? Uh, and after that, we'll keep moving on our day.
This next form of growth takes place beneath the surface, away from observation. Others cannot see the deepening and spreading of roots in the rich, dark soil of solitude. This intimate knowing of God, of being in relationship with Him, happens in the deepest places of the heart. It is this relationship that grounds us and keeps us firm. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Good. Oh, I just thought it was going to be a little louder. It's okay, fine. Listen, have you guys ever been to SeaWorld? Anyone? I'm from Florida, so I used to go a lot. And when you would sit in, sit in a certain zone, it was the splash zone. I don't know why anyone is not in the splash zone this morning. This is where the glory falls. What's going on? Come on. There we go. All of these people are about to leave, like, totally brighter, glowing, because this is the zone right here. So you guys... You guys are my people this morning. Good morning, good morning. My name is Carmen Cologne, like Jeremiah said. Um, We are part of your church planning partners. We're in southwest Detroit. It's also known, if you've ever had some really good Mexican food, it's in southwest called Mexican Town by the train station area. Has anyone familiar with that area? Perfect. So we're friends. We're friends, right? And so... um, A little bit about our church, it's almost two years old, Um, we're in the heart of Southwest, really reaching people that you wouldn't normally reach, right? So we have about um, a good population of homeless um, brothers and sisters that attend our church, Um, a lot of single moms, um, people who are addicts, like I mean, the demographic's a lot different, but it's so rewarding and it's such a blessing, and we're so thankful for the partnership that um, Kensington has made with us. So can we just give a round of applause? Like that is such a blessing to us, and so I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for that. So um, like I said, my name is Carmen. My husband's name is Richard. We lead pastor that church. We've been married since high school, not since high school, but we've been together since high <laughs> We've been together since high school. We're high school sweethearts, and we have three kids. I have a nine-year-old, um, and then I have a three-year-old, and then I have a one-year-old. She just turned one last week. So um, life is fun around our house. And I was telling the production team earlier, if you guys see me doing random dance moves with my hands, it's because I'm not used to not like holding a microphone. So this is the first time that I feel like Britney Spears up here with this wonderful headset. So if my hands start doing things that they're not supposed to, just, just go with it, okay? Just go with it with me this morning. So I'm super excited that we are in um, just week three going over this, this chart with you guys. I was going over it, listening to some messages from the past week. What an incredible series that you guys are in called Growing, right? This is really a great series. And so today we're talking about all about knowing God. Can you guys say knowing God? Good, perfect. Knowing God, and that's what we're in. And so we live in a time and age, right, where we really feel like we know people. Like we really know things, right, because we always have so much information available to us, right? So I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but a sleeve of Ritz crackers has 482 calories. Thank you. That is what I did when I Googled it, right? Because I was on the couch watching a show. I love some rich crackers. Ended up eating the whole sleeve, and I was like, oh, my goodness. How many calories is in this sleeve of Ritz crackers? So I went to my trusty best friend, Google, right? Has all the information that I need. And when I saw 482 calories, I was shocked because not only did I, I don't even, I can't believe I'm admitting this. Not only did I eat one sleeve, you can finish the rest of that sentence. (laughs) We just know. We just know what happened there. It wasn't good, right? And so I just love um, Rich Crackers and I just love, I love the internet. I love Google. It's so helpful. It's so useful. And so a couple years back, I was having some stomach pain in the morning, right? Has anyone ever had stomach pain before? So what do you do? You go to Google, right? You go to Google for the answers. So in the morning, I Googled stomach pain, kind of sharp. Like, I mean, just putting all the description possible in this, in this Google search. And what came up was quite alarming, okay? I mean, it was, it was worrisome. And so I went to my husband and I said, something is wrong with me. And he said, Carmen, you're fine, you're fine. I go, no, you don't understand. My Google search said that I do not have much time left. Like, I do not have much time left, and you do not care, right? And he goes, you're fine, you're fine. All day I still had these pains all night. So then it came, 2 a.m. in the morning, right? 
2 a.m. And I, I wake up my husband. I said, they're still here. It's getting worse. I'm going to the emergency room. And he goes, what? I go, I have to go. I'm so panicked. And he goes, okay, go. So I drove myself to the emergency room. With the, you got, oh, you thought I was joking. No, I really went to the emergency room. I, I was spiraling. Like, I was on a long spiral, right? Get to the emergency room. They're doing all the things. They gave me, like, some medicine. I don't know what it was. And I'm just like, well, here it is. So I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and the doctor comes in, or the nurse. Who knows? It was, like, 4 a.m. at this time. And they go, well, we think. And at this time, I really wasn't having pain, so I was like, they fixed it. They fixed my pain. And they, well, trying to go over everything, they said, we think you you just had some gas. (laughs) Another thing that I don't know why I admitted to you guys on our first time getting to know each other, but I've never had those sharp pains since, just so you guys know. So I do believe that it probably was some gas, unlike my Google search, right? But Who's with me on this? When something goes wrong or something, we want to know something, we go straight to Google. Has anyone done that before? Please say I'm not alone. Thank you. You guys are my people, right? So we've done this because we have information that is available to us at all times, right? And so really, we do this a lot with God, right? We do this a lot about God, about knowing things. We can say we know a lot about God, right? But do we truly know God? Do we truly know his heart? Do we truly know what he would do in certain um, situations? And in this chart, we see that growth, and it's going to be on the screen as well, that growth begins when I've been believing in God, right? That was week one, which initiates a lifestyle of seeking God, which was week two, And this week, we see that when we start to grow in knowing God, this is where the relationship starts to develop. I'm not going to be here for all the rest of the weeks, but I think this is my favorite week, (laughs) growing. I love this, growing in God. You see, this book right here, from cover to cover, is full of stories and scripture to help us know God better Not know about God, but to know him, truly and deeply know him. And so this is what we're going to be looking at today. So if you have your Bibles with you, or if it's on your phone, because this is 2022 and we don't always bring Bibles anymore, we are going to be starting in 2 Peter 1, 3. 2 Peter 1, 3. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, in this verse, it's from Peter, right? We're in 2 Peter. So Peter's the one that's writing here. And in this verse, he's coming to a conclusion in his writing that he is going to be dying soon, right? So if we're in that place, if we're thinking that something is coming to an end, what are we going to do? We're going to get things in order, right? We're going to make sure our kids are set. We're going to make sure the will is good. We're going to make sure people know what's going to happen. We're only going to do the most important things. If I know that tomorrow I'm passing away, I'm not going to go to Target. I might actually. That was a bad example. I might go to Target. That's pretty important. But I'm not going to do things that aren't important, right? So it's the same for us. And this is Peter. Peter is a, knows that he is about to die. And he knows his life is coming to an end. And he wants to get things in order, right? And so what we see is he's writing to a group of churches that he loves so much. And he's desperately telling them, listen. Listen, if there's anything that I want you to know, that I want Jesus' followers to know, is that you must never stop growing. That you must never stop growing. Peter could have wrote anything, right? He could have said anything. He said, the most important thing I can tell you to this this group of churches, these beloved people, people, is to never stop growing. And so we see in 2 Peter 1.3, it says this. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. Who called us by his own glory and goodness. We have everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge. What do we see here, right? Peter doesn't say, 
You're going to have everything you need because you know about God. You're not going to have everything you need because every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, you get up and you go to the Clarkson campus and go to church. No. He said that everything you need is in this knowledge, in knowing God, who he truly is, right? Knowing God, growing in God. And what Peter's talking about, there's two things, right? There's two types of knowledges. We can have a head knowledge, right? Like, I know the the sleeve writs... The sleeve cracker of Ritz is 482 (laughs) calories, right? That's my head knowledge. Then there's also a heart knowledge. At Santos Church, every Sunday, if I'm doing the welcome, we say, at Santos, we're here to know God and love differently. And I say, and when we know God, I'm not talking about a head knowledge, I'm talking about a heart knowledge. Because when our heart knows him, we are transformed. And when we are transformed, we love others differently, Right? This is a different type of knowledge. This is a different type of knowing. It's not knowing about something, but it's truly and deeply knowing that it causes you to do something different. Right? It causes you to do something different. And that is the knowledge that Peter is talking to us about. This heart knowledge, it pulls us in. It draws us close. It sees the places of our heart that we don't show anyone else. This heart knowledge is something that is intimate, right? It's something that is deep. It's transformative. And we cannot move forward in this this process, in this cycle, until we truly and deeply know God. Because God longs for us to know him in a deep way, guys. He longs for us to know him in such a A deep way. And scripture, scripture even tells us that some of the greatest people that we know about today were known for how much they pursued and chased after God. Let's talk about these for a little bit. Abraham. How many of you guys know Abraham? Father Abraham had many sons. I told you, my hands are going to do weird things, right? Abraham. Abraham in scripture was called a friend of God. He was given the title a friend of God. What an honor to be given that title. You don't get that title unless you are knowing him. Abraham was known for his pursuit of knowing God so deeply. Someone else is Moses, right? We know Moses. Moses in the Bible, he actually physically climbed a mountain so he could be closer to God. That is how much he wanted to know him, right? David. I love David. (laughs) He's one of my favorite, favorite characters, not characters, persons in the Bible, right? David uses this language when he writes in Psalms like he's an addict. Go with me on this. Addicts say things that just like don't make sense, right? Because they're chained to their addiction. They say things that don't make sense. And in Psalms, that's what I see with David, Like, he's saying things that just don't make full sense when we think about it. He's like, in Psalm 73, he says, David uses a language where he he says, in a dry and weary land where there is no water, but my soul thirsts for you. He is thirsty. He is in a dry and weary land. He's saying, but I still want you. Think of the most dehydrated you've ever been. Think of that moment. That's David, and he's writing, but I still only want you, God. He says things like, if you can give me anything, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to dwell. He, these, these people in the Bible, they know God so much, it oozes out of their words. It oozes out of their life. And it doesn't fully make sense, but that is how well they know God. Paul is another great example. He says, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul is just saying, if I die, I'm just going to get more Jesus. This is crazy talk. If my daughter said that to me, I'd be like, oh, that's a little dark. But no, this is the level that we see in Scripture, that people are going to know God. And we know they know God by by their actions, right? We know that they know him so deeply because of the things that they write and the things that they say. I love, 
I really love this scripture, and I thought it flowed really well with what we're talking about today. And it's in Matthew 7, and Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount with a final warning for true faith, right? Jesus is giving his final warning, Sermon on the Mount, and he says this, they may use all the right talk and even make impressive displays of power, but they will not belong to the Lord. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me. Let's make, it, let's make it today. Let's use these words for today. Lord, I went to church every single Sunday. Lord, when the, when the songs were playing in the car and the bad word came on, I lowered the volume. Lord, I do not go to rated R movies. Lord, I'm this and I'm on that. Like we, we pick and choose things that we can say. But we see here in scripture, God says, no, you're making what this is supposed to be about actions, about a checklist, about things to do. When God is saying, I want you to know me so deeply. I want you to know me outside of this room. I want you to know me when you're in the car crying, when you got the report from the doctor, and I want you to draw close to me. I want you to know me when my marriage is in shambles and you don't know where to turn to. I want you to know me. Outside of all of this, all of the fluff, all of the things that we do that, that Christians think that is the right thing to do, God is saying, no, that's it. You're missing the mark. God desires to be known. He desires to be known and not just known about. He desires to be known so deeply. I want to talk about two things, right? To kind of give you, give you something to, to leave here with. To give you some action steps. We all like a good action step, right? We, we all like something good that we can do and take, right? So the first one is this. Never, never stop the pursuit of knowing God. Never stop the pursuit of knowing God. It is a lifelong pursuit. You know what I thought when I saw this? <laughs> it's going to be silly. I want to tell you. When I saw this, I thought of the great singer and songwriter Brian McKnight. Does anyone know Brian McKnight? <laughs> Anybody? All right. My girl. Right? He goes like this. One. Sing it with me. You're like a dream come. Don't let me sing alone. Two. Just want to be with you. Do we know the song? All right, come on. Three, and it's plain to see that you're the only. I don't hear you. One for me and four, repeat steps. Yes. Five, make you fall in love with. If ever I believe my work is done. Come on, this is the big part. Then I start back at. How? You guys left me a little bit hanging, but it's okay. I didn't prepare you. I'm the one with the Britney Spears mic today, so that's why I was able to just pull that out. How profound. When I thought it was all done, I start back at one. Because it's a long lifetime pursuit. You don't just get married and never pursue your spouse and expect things to keep growing, right? You don't just have a child and neglect them and, and not talk to them and all these things and expect them to keep growing. It is a lifelong pursuit. And I want to remind you today, wherever you are, never stop your pursuit. And knowing God. My husband and I went on a trip to Pittsburgh. And 
Days prior to us leaving, we had a faux pas with our battery situation, and we fried the electricity in our car. Bummer. <laughs> because we had this long trip coming up, and we were planning to listen to podcasts and play our favorite songs and do a sing-along and just have the best time, and we fried everything. So we had to leave and go to Pittsburgh in silence. <laughs> and we could have taken that time to just sit there, look out the window, yeah, the kids are good, tell some stories, but we didn't. We were intentional. We pulled up some questions on how to know your spouse deeper, right? And we started to ask these questions to each other. Like I said, we've been together since high school, right? I've known him. We've been through things. But it's always changing. Our knowledge is always changing. God never changes. But the seasons that we're in reveal revelations about God, things about God that we never saw when we, when we were younger, in seasons that we were before, right? It's always changing. We should always be pursuing, always wondering, always asking God, what can you show me in this situation? What can you reveal to me right now in my actions? Why am I feeling this way, God? Getting to know his heart so it can change who you are, right? So the pursuit with my husband is ongoing. I'm constantly wanting to know him more. And I can tell you, I know, not many people know this, but when he twiddles, is that a word, twiddle? Twist? <laughs> Twist his beard, I know he's thinking really hard about something, right? Someone else might be looking at him and be like, oh, he's just playing with his beard. No, but I know through relationship, through that deep connection, that he's thinking about something deep. And so I always go, what are you thinking about? <laughs> Tell me, right? It's an ongoing pursuit. It never stops. I love this. And this wasn't in my notes, and I added it. I was thinking about it. In Revelation 4, in Revelation 4, we see a scene of angels around the throne of God. Just thinking about it kind of like gives me goosebumps, Right? We see the scene of angels sitting around the throne of God and all day and all night they say, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Day and night, night and day, they sing these praises to God and they never stop. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And when they're done, they say it again. Holy, holy, who does stuff like that? People who know someone so deeply, they know what he is that they're never gonna stop praising him. That they're never going to stop worshiping him. That they're never going to stop just pouring their all out for him. And we see that. We see that beautiful example. Man, that's how I want to be. Every day I want to wake up. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And when we put that in our mind... When we fix our gaze on him, when we make sure that he is the first one that we are pursuing in our life, it changes everything else. When we put him where he belongs, it changes everything. It changes everything. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. They never stop pursuing. They never stop pursuing. The next thing is this. In your pursuit, in your pursuit of knowing God, your life will see transformation. Your life will see a transformation. I would even like to add a word into that, a radical transformation. You might be sitting here today and something is a mess in your life. You know what it is? God knows what it is, right? It could be your marriage. It could be your kids. They might be wilding out, right? It could be your job, your employees, the workspace that you're in. It could be your friendships. It could be your finances. And I can say with confidence that if you pursue knowing God, 
over all things, knowing his heart, knowing his will, it will begin to transform your life. It will begin to transform the things that you've held on so, so tightly to, thinking that this could fix it or that could fix it or reading this book could fix it or whatever it is. And all of those things are great things. Counseling is a beautiful thing, right? Workshops, and th these are great things. And they help us in this journey. But God, but Jesus, he is our pursuit. Let him be our pursuit. And in that pursuit, watch him. Watch him transform your heart and your mind to your actions, to the things you give to and give value to, to the words that you speak over other people, to what you allow other people to speak over you, right? Because you're pursuing God and you're knowing his heart so deeply in this cycle, knowing God. Ephesians 1, 17 through 18 says this, I keep asking that the, Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Oh, it's so good. So that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Man, wisdom and revelation, right? That I'm not going to find on Google. Hope in knowing God and knowing that no matter my circumstance, knowing that he is in control and that he loves me, and he sees me, and he knows me. God wants to be known like this, right? God wants to be known like this. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19 says this. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. To grasp, oh guys, I love this part, right? To grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I love that word, fullness. Some of you guys sitting here today might feel empty, right? you might just feel a little empty. Paul invites us into this, prays for us, and invites us to be filled in the fullness of God. In the fullness of God. To know that this love surpasses the knowledge to, to know about, right? God wants to be known. Fully, deeply, intimately. He wants to see all the pieces and all the things that you keep hidden from other people. He wants to know it. And so I love that Pastor Jeremiah said that we're doing communion today. I think it's such a beautiful tie-in to this message. God desires to know you guys, to me, know me, so deeply. 
that he would send his one and only son, Jesus. I have a son. I was petrified when I was pregnant and found out I was having a boy after having a girl because I was like, they are wild. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Boys are a little wild. And I was so nervous. Let me tell you what, the mama's boy thing is a real thing. And it, it, it turned, when we, for God to love the world that he gave his only son, like it completely shifted in my brain, right? God desires to be in relationship with you so badly that he would send his own flesh and blood, Jesus, to be mocked, to be beaten, to be crucified in our place just because he wants to know us. And all we have to do is pursue him. All we have to do is go after him. When we're singing these songs of worship on the stage, man, go in. Be like those angels in Revelation 4. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. If you didn't know, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. So when we're here doing worship, we're not just doing worship because it's, we got to do two songs and then we got to break and then we got to do two more songs. See the arms, they do crazy things. No, we're practicing here for what heaven is going to be like. And if you can't know him here, what did it say in Matthew 7? Man, you were just acting. You were just doing the do. You were just getting ready, going to church, making sure the kids looked okay. You were just listening to the songs. The message was on and you were just scrolling social media. You were really checking if Ritz sleeves were 482 calories. When these things are put into place for you to pursue knowing God. I love the song we end on. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Those aren't just words that go on the screen. So that we can tell God, God, I need to pursue you. The world is going to try to shape me. And the news is going to try to tell me and influence me things. But God, what do you have for me? How can I know you more? He knows you so deeply. And he loves you so much. It doesn't matter if you're 22 or if you're 82. He is still pursuing you. And he is saying, come and know me better in worship, in the word, in these scriptures, in your life. He is intentionally sending situations and people to us so that we can show them Jesus. But if we don't know God, we can't keep going in this growth cycle. We can't keep going and we get stuck in a rut and we wonder what's going on. But we've turned our eyes from Jesus and put them to our circumstance. Put them to what the world is telling us. Put them to the news or our Facebook feeds. It's an ongoing process where we should be praying, God, how can I know you better? God, transform my heart. Transform my mind. Transform the way that I act, the way that I speak. Help me to know your heart more because all of this is just practice for when we get to heaven and we get to join those angels in Revelation 4 saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So during this song, we talked about the head knowledge and the heart knowledge, right? Do some heart work. Do the heart work. Come and grab these elements, the juice that represents the blood of Christ, the bread that represents his body, 
And don't just make it another action that you do. Take those elements back. Go to your seat. Do the heart work. God, maybe this is you. God, I've just been going through the motions. I've just been thinking that this is just what we do. And I leave church and I don't even think about you again. Say, God, help me know you more. Maybe you're sitting here and you just came here because someone invited you or you came because your spouse dragged you in or your friend or whatever that is. Let me tell you what, you're not here by accident. God loves you. He knows you. And he's there ready for you to pursue him. But maybe when you take those elements, you need to do the heart work. God, transform my heart. And in that, transform everything that's around me. My marriage, my work, my relationships. Transform my life. So I love that we get to do communion together today. And why we do that, let God just come upon you. Feel his presence. I was sitting here during worship practice and I got like jacked, like pumped. (laughs) Not because they sing so fabulous, because they do, right? But because I thought about my little church in Southwest Detroit and all the churches around on Sunday mornings that get to gather together in one name to lift one name high, pursuing God. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this opportunity. God wants to deeply know you. So during the song, you can come up, take the elements, go back to your seat and do the heart work to know him better. Can we pray? God, the name above all names. God, we gather here today, not for routine, not for show, but to draw close to you. God, we thank you for desiring to be so close to us that you would send your son Jesus to stand in our place so that we would have no barriers to have access to you. Jesus, I pray for every man and woman and family represented in this room. God, I don't know their circumstance. I don't know what their worries are, their anxieties, the burdens, but you do. And God, right now, I I pray that you would send your peace that scripture promises us, that peace that passes all understanding, God. God, let them know that you are here, that you are for them, and that you love them. God, let them draw close to you in these moments, in these songs that we sing, so that when they leave here, they know you that much more. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for this time of worship. And I pray that we would let your life continue to transform us in this growing process. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Remember the elements and do that work.
He would send his only son, himself incarnate to this earth. And Lord, we can only know the goodness, the true goodness of that if we know you, if we lean into you, if we pursue you. And so we do that, just that, Lord. 
we lean in. We make room in our hearts for you and we lean in. We listen for when you call, when you beckon us by name, we lean in. And we love you. Amen. I know there's just a few of you still getting your elements. And if you haven't taken them already, please do. And do it in remembrance of his love for you and what that means. And uh, we're going to sing uh, one last song. And I'd just love to invite you just to, just to worship with us. You don't have to stand if you don't want to. You can sit and let these words continue to wash over you. But worship with us and engage with the Lord and do that work that Carmen was talking about. So alive. 
You sing out as you speak. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life so I could find it. That is the God we get to know, that we get to worship. And that is the God who knows you. So beautiful. Lord Jesus, we love you. We submit ourselves to you, God. We open our hearts to pursue you, to know you more. May we experience your profound beauty and your power and your mercy and your grace every day. May we live in the goodness of our Lord for the rest of our days, knowing no matter what trial or circumstance may come, that you, God, are our Father, are the Prince of Peace, are the King of Kings, Lord over our lives, lover of our soul and our Savior. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday. We love you guys, and I pray that you'd be encouraged to continue doing that hard work. Uh, if you want prayer after service, our amazing prayer team is going to be down here at the edge of the stage for you if you need. And uh, we love you guys. Have a wonderful week. God bless.